Welcome. In a previous video, I unboxed an Amcrest IP5M-1173EW camera, and it is a PoE camera, meaning power over Ethernet. So I have that installed, and I have Ethernet connected from it to the power over Ethernet switch, and now I want to configure it on my desktop computer. So I'll put a link in the description to the unboxing, and I'll also put a link to the camera, and if you buy a camera using my link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the first thing I want to do is download the Amcrest IP config. So I'll go into my browser, and I'm using the Chrome browser for this. I'll use Amcrest IP config Mac, and I'll search for that. Then I'll go to this page, and you can download this Amcrest IP tool for Macintosh. So download and install that, which I've already done. And I'll go to that software, and this will find all of the Amcrest cameras on your network. So if you're having trouble finding it right away, it can take a little while before it shows up but you can change this first setting here, or make sure this is on IPv4, and then change this one to all. You know, it's probably on IPC. So you see here, when I change that to all, the uh, new camera comes up. You can also go over here to settings and make sure the start IP is uh, pertinent to your uh, network. So the camera I want to configure is this one here. You can look at the camera model name, or you know, if you have multiples of the same camera, you might want to do one at a time so you know which is which. And I'll uh, take note of the IP address here, then I'll go into a web browser and I'll type that in. I say web browser, I'm using Chrome for all this because it um, can work different on different browsers. So the username and password is admin for both to start. And now it'll ask me for a new password, so I'll type that in. So we'll land on this interface and it'll say, please click here to download and install the plugin. So I'll do that. This is the Amcrest web view and it's like a Chrome app. So I'll click OK here, I'll hit add app. Okay, so that took a little bit. It was a pretty big download, but it downloaded, and it's under the apps here in my Chrome apps. So you can see you can go to Chrome colon slash slash apps. Also, if I close all these down, open up a new browser window, at least the way mine's configured, it has this little app button here too. So I can click on the Amcrest Web View app, and it essentially brings up another web browser. So I'll type in my IP address again, and I'll type in my username and password, and you'll remember I changed the password. And now we have the live view. I'll make this full screen. And we're on the mainstream now. There's also a substream one. So if we click on that, I'll bring that up. And that's a lower resolution um, stream. And then there's some substream two that you can configure. It's not configured right now. Um, it would be nice if this took this off until it was configured, but um, that's how they do it. And then you look down at the bottom here, there's like PTZ, which means point tilt zoom. And this doesn't have point tilt, point tilt zoom feature, so I'm not sure why they put that on there. Um, there's some other configurations, like we click one to one, that will um, show us native pixel resolution. You can uh, adjust your brightness, contrast, things like that. Uh, if, you, if you look up here a little bit, this is like a zoom in um, marquee, so we can zoom in on a certain area. You can also take snapshots, um, do multiple shots, or record video. But uh, what I want to do now is go into Setup. And I'm going to click here on the left to Video. And we have two of our streams here. We have the mainstream and substream. And the an interesting thing I found here is it says bitrate is customized. And if I hit Reset Defaults, it changes that value. Um, so I don't know why the default is customized. And it customizes to 2560. So I'll, I'll leave that at 8192, which is a higher bit rate. And I'll hit save. So if we look up here, we have the encode mode, which is 8.264. And this also supports, supports H.265, which is a better compression ratio. The resolution here is 2592 by 1944. And that is a 3 by 4 ratio. So that's similar to like an older TV. It's not widescreen. You can change that to a uh, number of different resolutions, including just like your standard 1080p or uh, 720p. And then you have the frame rate. And needless to say, the higher resolutions, the higher bit rates, the files it creates are going to be larger. So keep that in mind. And it has uh, CBR, which is constant bit rate, and VBR, which is variable bit rate. And uh, I'm not completely sure what the frame interval is. Maybe that's like a keyframe type thing. And then uh, we have the substream. So here you can do substream 1 or substream 2, and these uh, this limits you to 640 by 480. Let's see if this one's the same, yeah. And you can do H.264, uh, 
uh, Motion JPEG or H.265. So Motion JPEG is incredibly compatible with like everything, although H.264 is very compatible. So this is um, a stream you might use if you're connecting over uh, the internet or something like that. And then you have like the frame rate is five frames per second and it supports CBR and VBR. And then you have the bit rate here. You can change that. Those are the two streams. Well, you can set three up here, it looks like, actually. My previous cameras, you can only set up two. Um, and I usually only use the mainstream, but the other one is available. So uh, you can go to snapshot here. This um, is how you determine like what you want for that, the quality, you know, the interval. You have overlay. So this is like a privacy mode. So it looks like you can block things out here. That's kind of odd. <laughs> um, but I always like to change the channel title. So I'll change this to backyard since it's my backyard camera. And then you can change the uh, time display and then it has a, a logo overlay. It's interesting that this is a five megapixel camera and this logo overlay is disabled. I recently set up a four megapixel version that's similar to this camera and the logo was on by default. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Under path here, you can set up your path for the live snapshot and live record. So that's on that main screen when you hit record or take a snapshot. This is where it stores those. And I'm not going to go over every option under here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I can uh, try and help you. So we've got under network here, you have your standard TCP IP um, settings. Connection uh, talks about the ports it's using. IP filter for, um, it's, it's almost like a firewall kind of feature. SMTP email, this is for setting up uh, notification emails. There's a couple different uh, vendors here. Although I imagine um, like Google probably kind of blocks this. You may have to go into Google and tell it to allow insecure uh, email. I don't use this feature. Then we have UPnP, multicast, uh, quality of service, and HTTPS. So I'm using this on my private network. If you're going over the internet, you'd absolutely want to enable HTTPS on here. It might slow it down though. So if you're on a local network, you, you know, you may or may not want to turn that on depending on the security needs. Then we have event and we have video, video detection and we have this enabled and we can schedule this. So right now it's scheduled um, all the time it's on. And then we have anti dither and this is for how long the alert is issued or something like that. I'm not completely sure how that works, but uh, something to take note of is detection area. We can hit set up on that. And we can say remove all or we can select all of the detection area. So if you're getting, um, say, movement, say you have a plant over here that blows in the wind and you want to record it, you can remove that area and uh, take it out of the motion detection. So I'll hit cancel there. Um, and then you can say you want to send an email or take a snapshot, things like that. Then we have abnormality. And it says uh, event type is disconnected or IP conflict. And then it has illegal access. So you can send emails based on other events besides just uh, motion. Under storage, we have the schedule. So we have this set up for recording uh, when there's motion. You can you know, have it record all the time if you want. Um, snapshot, snapshot schedule and holiday schedule on here also. For destination, there's a couple different options. You can go with FTP. So you can have this right to an FTP server, or you can have this go to network attached storage, or you can have this go to a network attached storage. And for some reason, this you can't click enable on there. I don't know, maybe you have to have a IP address in here. So yeah, I don't know why. Maybe you can only do one at a time. No, I don't know. I'm not sure why that's uh, set like that, but uh, I, I've used FTP. You can uh, create up an FTP server and store it on there. Then you have record control, it says pack duration, eight minutes, uh, pre-event record, five seconds, disk full, you want to override or stop, the record mode is auto, manual, or off, and which stream to record. So you can record the main or the substream. So I mean, you know, if you're recording the substream, you're not gonna have great quality. You're not gonna be able to pick out someone's face very easily or things like that. But if you wanted to just know when someone, say, opened a garage door, um, you know, you could see that in the substream recording. And the substream would be very small though. Uh, if you don't have a lot of storage space. And then you have cloud storage. So this would be if you store on Ampress Cloud. We go to system here, click on general, and we have our language, our video standard. It looks like that's an option here, but it's only NTSC, so that's kind of interesting. And the only language here is English. So uh, if we hit date and time, it, this gives you a number of options. You can um, tell it to sync with the time server. 
you can enable um, the daylight saving time, things like that. On manage users, you can um, add different users. So you could um, add a user that someone could view, but they wouldn't be able to admin the server. On default settings, this gives you the option to um, change it back to the default settings or factory default. And then we have import export. So interestingly, when I tried this in a regular browser, I wasn't able to export, but it seems to work in here. I can click export and I can export the config. But when I went into Safari or Chrome, these buttons didn't seem to work for some reason. So if you're having trouble with that, make sure you're using the Amcrest Web View app. Then here's auto maintain. We can have it auto reboot. So this says it'll auto reboot at Sunday at 327. So, you know, I don't know if that's necessary, but that's something to consider. I mean, if this were a movie, the bad guys would find out when the auto reboot was and they would sneak into your vault um, <laughs> during that time. So um, then you have auto delete old files here. You can also manually reboot with this. So, you know, it's kind of funny. If you want to manually reboot, you have to go to system, auto maintain, and then manual reboot. So that can be kind of confusing to find. So keep that in mind if you need to do that. And then we have upgrade here. And I haven't had much luck with this. Like if I hit check version here, it doesn't seem to go to the, um, it doesn't seem to do that. And then you can do download latest. So what I've done is download it on the website. If you click this, it will take you to a website. Although this doesn't seem to work within Abcrest WebView. If you go to the regular browser, this link will work. But you can also just search in your web browser, download the uh, update, and then upload it here. Under information, we have our version. Under log, this will log different events. And then we have online users, which shows who's currently online. So I'll click back on our video here while I end this video. So those are the basics of setting up an Amcrest camera on a oh, desktop PC. So I'll put a link in the description of my playlist with other Amcrest videos. If you have anything you want me to cover, leave a comment below and maybe I'll make another video. So, and if you have any general questions, ask me about those. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.